I got a request the other day to review a game called Uniracers for the Super Nintendo. I have never heard of that game before, so I thought, sure, why not? Let's check it out. Admittedly, I don't play racing games very often. In fact, with the exception of the F-Zero series and maybe the occasional game of Mario Kart, I'm not really a fan that much. But Uniracers definitely showed me a fresh and fun approach to the genre. So how does the game work exactly? Well, the gameplay consists of you controlling a unicycle that races another through various courses. Three variations in all, a straight race, a lapped race, and a trick event. The animation and speed in this game is quite impressive. I mean, seriously, check this out. This makes me question the whole blast processing thing that Sega was constantly boasting about in contrast to the Super Nintendo. And let's not forget the music, man, listen to that. The controls feel fine, although it may take a while to get used to what everything does. Simply pressing the D-pad in the direction you want to go will accelerate. You can use Y to brake and B to jump. Once in the air, you can use the shoulder buttons to perform either a roll or a flip depending on what direction you're facing. The A button makes you do a twist, and the X button makes you do what the game calls a Z flip. Huh. Uniracers has 8 tours, 4 of which need to be unlocked, all with cute names like Crawler and Shuffler. And each tour has 5 tracks. Your first time through each track you're racing for the bronze medal, or more specifically you're racing against another unicycle named Bronson. Get it? Bronson? Bronze? Anyway, once you beat all the tracks in the tour you'll be able to race the tracks again against a harder opponent, this time named Sylvia, so on and so forth. The gameplay, once you get used to it, is pretty fun. You may be asking the point to doing all these tricks in a game where you're just trying to win a race, but the cool thing is that with this particular racing game, performing tricks actually makes you go faster. And like I mentioned before, there are actually certain tracks where you're trying to get a high score instead of actually racing, such as the bull track. One thing I like about this game is that early on, when you first face a new obstacle, the game usually doesn't go too hard on you for screwing it up. Like here, the first time through you won't know that you're supposed to manually flip yourself over before you hit the ground. But it's okay, cause neither does Bronson. He'll wipe out just as you will the first time. Of course, later on the game isn't as forgiving, and this is actually where some of the minor issues shine through. There will be times when you really mess up and there's no chance of you being able to catch up and win the race. You just want to restart as soon as possible. But that's when you'll find out that there isn't a restart option. You have to quit the race, go back into it, and then you can retry. I know it isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's a bit frustrating when you just want to get right back into a difficult race that you're trying to beat. Another small problem I found when first playing is that the options in the game are a bit vague. Like here, what does Define Player mean? Oh, it's a delete option. Well, why didn't they just call it Delete Player? Hmm. Later on I tried to see what the League mode was all about. All the options say Define Me. I guess you have to make your own league before being able to play. Okay, fair enough. But after I did all of that and actually went into a league game, I quickly found out that it was just another multiplayer mode. This normally wouldn't be an issue, but this is the one time in the game that you can't quit a race. So I'm just stuck here since I don't have a second controller plugged in to finish the race. And I have to get up and restart the Super Nintendo manually. So if you somehow manage to get all the medals in every single tour, then you unlock a secret final one, Hunter. Here you have to race against the trickiest Uniracer of all, the Anti-Uni. This guy is an asshole. Every time you even try to pass him up, he pulls some trick out on you. These tricks include flipping the screen upside down, reversing your controls, barf mode, which makes the background fly in all sorts of directions in an attempt to make you sick, ugh, making the track invisible, and hedgehog mode, which slows everything down. That's pretty funny. I guess this game really liked taking jabs at Sega. Because another thing is if you try to rename one of the racers Sonic, it tells you that the name is not cool enough. So, if you somehow manage to beat the Anti-Uni in the most difficult tour of all, then you actually get a funny ending screen. Amazing! New Uni wins despite dirty tactics! Anti-Uni in custody! <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Alien found in Beth! What? Is that a reference to something? I, I don't get it. And then, we see one of the most disturbing end credit scenes of all time. Ugh. What... What am, what am I even looking at? Huh, I guess this game was designed by spandex-wearing gnomes. 
So before we close, I thought I'd share a fun fact. So DMA Design, the company that developed Uniracers, was actually sued by Pixar after the game's release. This was under the grounds that Uniracers apparently copied the design and concept from Pixar's 1987 short film Red's Dream, because, you know, Pixar invented the unicycle. DMA Design ended up losing the lawsuit and, as such, Nintendo stopped production of the Uniracers game. Don't feel too bad though, because DMA Design would eventually go on to become the company known as Rockstar North, most known for its extremely successful Grand Theft Auto series, among other popular titles. So, Uniracers. It's got a few minor flaws, mainly its need for a more user-friendly interface, but besides that, it's pretty fun and quirky. For a game where you play as lifeless objects, it's actually got a lot of character to it. I say give it a try.